Hi guys, this second challenge is called equalize the array. So here we have an array of integers and we want to reduce that array until all the remaining elements are equal. So here I need to write a function to determine the minimum number of elements to reach that goal. So let's say I have an array like this, one, two, two, and three. I think this is a bit small, so let me switch to my notepad here. Let's say I have this array. So it has four elements, one, two, two, and then three. I could delete one and then delete three, and I will be left with that sub array two and two. So you can see that these are equal because it's two repeated basically, and we've made only two deletions. So we would meet the requirements for this current challenge. I could also delete one, two, and then two, and I will be left with three. Now when they say that the remaining elements have to be equal, they don't stress that you need multiple elements. So you can be left with a single element and that is fine. But in that case, if we were left with three, although the remaining elements would be equal because it's only one element, we would have to make three deletions. That is not the minimum number of deletions we can make. So I could also delete two, two, and then three. And again, although I'll be left with one, which is fine, I would have to make three deletions. So that is not the best solution. The best solution is to delete one and then three, and then we are left with um, two and then two here. This is the function that you can see on the right of my screen. So I am using a map here. You've seen me use C++ maps in previous videos. If you have not, please go back and check my implementation playlist and you will find such videos. So here I have a map. The key is going to be an integer and then the uh, value is also going to be an integer. And I'm calling that map. I'm then looping through my vector, my vector of integers or my dynamic array. And for every integer value inside of it, I am increasing the counts of that element inside my map. So let me switch back again to my notepad here. You can see this array that I have one, two, two, and three. If I were to apply my logic for that array, my map would look something like this. For the key one, the value would be one because it appears only once. For the key two, it appears twice. And for the key three, uh, the element appears once. So that's what we would have in our array. And the reason why I'm having this map here is because I want to have a logic like this. If I have an element that appears once, of course, it could be any number for that specific example. We only have numbers appearing once or twice. Our array already has four elements in total. So that means that if we want to maintain that element, we have to do the total size of the array minus the number of times the element appears. In that case, it will be four minus one, and we would get three. So three here indicates that we would need to make three deletions to maintain that element. On the other hand, if we have an element appearing twice, so that means twice out of the total of four, we would get two because four minus two equals two. So we would have to make two deletions to maintain that element in a subarray. So for instance, we would get two and then two. So this is the logic again. I've already explained the top here. I have a map, then I increase the counts for every element inside my array, and I store that inside my map. And then here I'm having an iterator. So that iterator points to the beginning of my map. That's why I have map int int iterator. I'm calling it itr, and I'm setting it to the beginning of my map, m.begin. And the next line, I have this uh, minimum variable, which is an int. And I'm setting it to the total size of my array minus one. So this assumes that I'm going to delete every element and then keep only a single one of them. That is the initial assumption. And this is necessary for my for loop here. So inside my for loop, I'm using that iterator again. That's why I have ITR. And then so long as we've not reached the end of the map, I can increase or move my pointer I had inside my map. And I can keep track of the ratio, not really the ratio but I'm basically performing that operation that you saw here, four minus one or four minus two, which I just explained. So here I have the size, the total size of my array minus the value for the number of times an element appears inside my array. And remember that my map looks something like this. So I'm saying the total number of elements in my array minus that value or minus that value. And once I have the difference stored inside my num variable, I can compare if my num variable is less than my current minimum. If it is, then I'm going to update the value of my minimum variable with the value of num. Otherwise, I will simply maintain the value of minimum. 
And again, this is called a ternary operator. I've explained that in the previous video. So you guys can always look through my channel and find such tutorials. And when I'm done with that, I simply return minimum. So now let me run this code. And we pass both sample test cases. Now I'm just going to submit my code and everything should run fine. And oh, by the way, one thing that I have not explained is that I added that ampersand to pass my argument inside the main program by reference. All right, so let's scroll down now and we can see that we've passed all the um, 17 test cases. So that's it for this HackerRank challenge. If you guys liked it, please make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, drop your questions inside the comment section, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.